Hello and welcome to a new episode about using open source software to generate G-code for your CNC. In this episode I'm going to talk about a very cool feature that Blender Cow has kind of hidden. I'm going to show you how to use it and you will see that it's a very very useful thing. First of all I'm using Blender 4.2.1 with the latest Blender Cow add-on which is 1043 most probably at this moment if you go to the official website to blendercam.com you won't find this version you will find version 1.0.27 go ahead and install that version and let me show you how to make the update go to the edit menu go to preferences to add-ons and here in the list you will find blender cam if you cannot find it if you have too many add-ons just write blender cam whatever matches and here at the bottom i have choose a preset up update source if you select stable you will have the 1.0.27 if you select the unstable version this is the currently active version the version that is being developed as we speak so you might want to use this one it says unstable but it's a pretty stable version it has some bugs also the stable version has a lot of them so it's not that much of a difference so after selecting the unstable close the preferences close blender open it again go to cnc cam or blender cam depending on the version that you have and you will find the update button if you cannot update using the update button which might happen depending on the version that you have you'll have to go back to the edit menu to preferences and instead of going to the add-ons you can go to the get extensions here again search for cam you will find the blender cam click on this arrow and on the uninstall button this will completely uninstall blender cam from your machine then go to github you will find the link you need to follow in the description of this video here you will find the latest release for now it's 1.0.43 click on it and download the blendercam.zip just click on the file and you will be able to download it now go back to blender go to the add-ons tab click on the little arrow and select install from disk and now select the latest blender cam that you have downloaded click on install from disk and now you can see it here appearing the latest version so if it doesn't work using the update button go this route go to the extensions remove it then move back to add-ons and install from disk starting from this version the update button should work in case it didn't work in previous ones after you have installed blender cam let's start creating a project and i will show you the very cool feature but not before thanking everybody that is following my youtube channel that has subscribed to my channel that likes my videos comments on them shares them and a special thanks for all the people that support me through my patreon page beta subscription and of course gaining access to ad free videos and the files that i'm working on in the videos but also to the people who support me financially through a just one time purchase a three dollar small thanks or a ten dollar big thanks now in this video i'm going to show you the coolest feature that i have seen yet in uh, an open source program for creating g-code for the cnc which is adjustable feed rate i don't mean by adjustable feed rate just to have the possibility to change a value but the program itself will automatically adjust the feed rate in order to match the tool load the tool bit load this means that when it's cutting a lot of material it will slow down when it's cutting less material it will speed up to the target speed but let's just create a new operation and i will show you how to set everything up i'm going to import a file i'm not going to create it so i will go to file import it's an obj file and it's a tray with a seahorse you can see the first video when i milled it it's on my channel i will select the file I will leave the scale as is depending on the source of the file you might have to adjust the scale but for me it's okay to leave the settings as the default values sometimes you might end up with a very huge object in case the object is not at the correct scale just press the end button and here you can scale it accordingly 10 times 100 times and so on let me just first modify the pointer of my mouse because I have a small pointer and I think a brighter yellow larger pointer would help you see whatever I press we are back with a big yellow pointer now I have the object in the scene go to the render tab scroll up and if you have most probably if selected here click on this field and select cnc cam make sure the interface is set to experimental because otherwise 
this setting won't work the thing that i'm going to show you in this video close the cam chains we are not going to need it now and let's create a new operation click on the plus button and i have an op tray underscore one make sure the object is tray if i hadn't selected it before creating the operation maybe i selected the light if i create a new operation you can see i have an error depending on whatever i select i might create by accident a wrong operation so make sure the object is the one that you want to make now i will scroll down i won't be talking about the settings that i'm not going to change so in case the object let's just move it a little bit up and in case the imported object is somewhere above the origin you might want to set it below origin this is the way blender cam works you can see here outline the cam machine so you need the object to be positioned from the origin down if somehow the object hasn't been positioned in such a way when importing go to the cam material size and position and make sure that placement is below click on the position object button and blender cam will automatically position the object as it should so let's close this tab we are not going to make any changes here anymore in the cam operation setup i'm going to use a strategy a parallel strategy which means it will mill lines along this shape another setting here is the distance between tool path this is the step over but in blender cam it's not defined as a percentage but as an actual number the distance it will move from one path to the other now i can see that i have everything in meters which when creating things for the cnc is not a good thing to change that go to the scene tab and here i have length change it from meters to millimeters now i can go back to blender cam scroll down down to where we were in the cam operation setup now i can set a distance between tool path by clicking here and write a value as i want 0.7 millimeters it doesn't really matter for now just make sure to select the correct strategy which is parallel for our situation in the cam optimization i will leave everything just as is the only thing that i'm going to check is simplify g code don't change the tolerance and that's all for the cam optimization panel now in the cam operation area if i didn't position the object that i want to mill below zero i will have to change the operation depth start and the free movement height i will leave the set max depth to object and i will uncheck use layers i don't want to use layers i want to show you how to mill this object in just one pass then we will also use layers and see the difference in the cam movement i will change one thing here i have move climb or conventional or a third option which is also an option that is missing in certain programs such as freecad which is meander zigzag this means that it will cut both on going upwards and coming back to the starting point so the operation time will be half the operation time required if the cutter head would go upwards lift come back here and do the same again of course it means that you will have some lines with a climb cut some lines with conventional cut but since i have very little space between the lines most probably the result will be exactly the same i won't change any other value from here for the feed rate i'm going to use the maximum feed rate that my machine can handle pretty decently which is 3500 millimeters per minute the plunge speed is by default 50 percent of this feed rate so the plunge speed is not an exact value in millimeters per minute it's just a percent of the normal feed rate i will turn it up to 100 percent the z-axis in my machine is pretty sturdy and the plunge angle represents the angle to the vertical that is the limit for considering any movement as a plunge so if i have a movement of let's say 20 degrees it will be considered a plunge so it will engage with a plunge speed the spindle rpm i will increase it to 19,000. so that is all that i have to set in the cam feed rate now let's go to the cam cutter menu here i will select a preset because somehow it matches what i have it's an end cylinder with a one millimeter diameter in the tip well i made a mistake it's not an end cylinder let's scroll up it's a ball end it's a one millimeter ball and that's the correct tool bit for carving so now i can make sure if i look at the cutter shape it's a ball nose shape this is a very useful field here because you can double check that you have selected the correct tool here i have a warning which says a 70 percent cutter engagement indeed it's quite a big value but since we are using an uh, automatical adjustment for the feed rate to match the tool load i think this can be 70 percent without any problems one last thing that i'm going to set is the output gco trailer an m02 otherwise the machine won't stop at the end of the operation the spindle will keep rotating for the cam machine 
I can set the work area, the feed rate, the minimum, the maximum. I'm not going to talk about this right now. You can see all these settings explained a little bit more in the video about setting up the machine. You can find it here. So now let's go up all the way to the CAM operations and click on the calculate path and export G code button. It will take some time since it's a 3D surface operation, but anyway, it's a lot faster than any other program that I have used for such an operation. So you can see here in the bottom corner 19.59 seconds it's a pretty fast result now let's look at the tool bit movement you can see it enters the cut here goes forward and backwards for all the movements it cuts the material and exits the cut at the end so it will be a lot faster than any other type of settings now if i scroll to the cam info and warnings i can see the operation duration which is 991 seconds it's a 17 minutes operation for a 3d carve of 240 millimeters by 150 millimeters the dimensions are rotated because the object is rotated that's the way i have imported it it doesn't really matter so it's a 15 centimeters by 24 centimeters 3d carve and the whole operation time is 17 minutes well it's not going to be that quick because i'm going to make a change that will increase the time but will make it actually possible to mill all this depth in just one single operation without having to rough mill everything and then move to the finishing tool bit of course you can do that i think it's much better it saves the tool bit life using a simple end mill to remove most of the material it's much better but for now for this example i'm going to use this approach and let's scroll down to the cam feed rate tab here i have an option which is called adjust feed rate with simulation but before clicking on this button i'm going to scroll up and click on the export button well i cannot do that because i will have a very difficult time finding the actual file before exporting the g-code i have to save the file if it is not saved otherwise i will struggle to find the file i've heard a lot of people complaining about where to find the file so first save the blender files let's call it seahorse save the file and you will find the g-code in the exact same folder now i can click on the export g-code button and let's take a look at the g-code it's just normal g-code movements you can see the modification for y for z of course for a lot of commands there is no modification of x because the movement is along the y-axis and now let's go back to blender and select the option that is going to create something i could easily say that it's almost magic let's scroll down to the cam feed rate panel and here i have the option adjust feed rates with simulation now i will scroll back up and click on the simulate this operation button this will generate a mesh a model which seems approximate to what will end up after milling everything it has just a couple of small artifacts but mainly it is very representative let me just hide the tray it's very representative for what i will end up with but the thing that this option did is very important i will export the g-code again and now let's go back to the file it has updated let's scroll down and you can see here for almost all the operations besides the y movement the z movement i also have an f value which means the feed rate you can see for each of the movements the feed rate is adjusted i have set up a feed rate of 3500 millimeters per minute but blender cam automatically reduces that speed in order to be able to mill the areas that have a lot of tool load to prevent damaging the tool bit to prevent breaking the tool bit it will speed up and slow down accordingly to make everything work in just a single operation i think this option is a very very advanced option it does it great so if you ever want to mill something and you are worried about the tool bit wear about the tool bit breaking use blender cam and you have the option to automatically adjust the feed rate based on the tool load so whenever you create an operation go to the cam feed rate check the adjust feed rates with simulation after generating the tool path click on the simulate export the g-code again and you will have the tool path with the adapted based on the tool load so now let's check how long this operation will take compared to the initial operation well from 991 seconds to 1083 seconds it's an almost two minutes increase so one and a half minute so it's not much longer than the initial operation but it's much safer and the tool bit will probably be sharp and in good condition for a much longer time of course you can use this option for any operation that you are creating using blender this might be one of the reasons that i like blender so much because it has a lot of 
powerful options. They are kind of difficult to reach, but once you know how to set them up, it can be very, very powerful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you want, you can support me financially visiting my Patreon page. There you can subscribe or buy a one-time thanks. This is all for this video. I hope you will use this function a lot. I like it very much and I'm going to use it for almost any project that I'm going to mill in Blender. Thank you and see you next time.